Hello, good morning. It's Sadil Fazahi, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of European markets on Monday, the 20th of June 2016. Be sure to visit tradesignaler.com, signals and market updates from leading providers. www.tradesignaler.com. You can download the app from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, in terms of European markets this morning, an impressive uh, gap higher. Uh, certainly been stopped out again on my short position, so certainly negative again for the week. Certainly finding it hard, tough to trade in the last uh, eight eight days now. It's been eight days of almost uh, constant losses, so very hard to navigate this market. Now let's see exactly where we are. Uh, currently, the FTSE is currently up by 2.4%. DAX is up 3%. French CAC 2.5%. Asian markets are mixed. You have the Nikkei certainly uh, short squeezing from an oversold, obviously, um, market and up by 2.3%. The Hang Seng 1.7%. But the Shanghai only uh, basically flat after the uh, housing data came in stronger. So whether or not that's interpreted as being okay, the Chinese economy certainly needs to cut back on potential credit lines and obviously uh, liquidity and therefore that's a negative for the uh, Chinese market but again that's a very important observation folks if China fails to rally when global markets are rallying that's a very bad sign okay I would be very afraid uh, and, and that, that alone is a risk off event okay in terms of European markets this morning we have the uh, political uncertainty in Italy political uncertainty in France as well now Mr Holland potentially having to um, uh, fight for his uh, potential seat as well so therefore those are two risk events okay and um, certainly, certainly uh, very uh, bearish from my perspective. The the uh, the actual uh, campaign referendum itself has been paused, and certainly will um, uh, will certainly be uh, co continued today. And therefore, that risk event obviously is is back on the agenda. Okay, so so we obviously since uh, Joe Cox a sad tragic event uh, and the uh, incident there certainly has triggered a potential risk rally on the back of uh, expectations that the uh, the actual incident will swing the vote in the o in the opposite favour uh, and obviously the sympathy vote will go towards Joe Cox uh, even though from my perspective it's a logical vote but again arguments are both sides so are both sides have to be respected but from my understanding it certainly seems like uh, you already have Miss, um, Miss Varsi um, uh, certainly leaving the uh, the Brexit Br British politician quits Brexit camp citing lies and xenophobia so if somebody within their own party is claiming lies and xenophobia itself. I mean, I've seen a British politician Monday accuse those campaigning for Britain to leave the European Union of spreading lies, hate and xenophobia, saying she was switching to the Remain camp. Britain will cast their vote, etc, etc, etc. Accused leave campaigners wrongly suggesting that staying in the EU would lead to vast numbers of Turks and Syrian refugees coming to Britain in the near future. Are we prepared to tell lies and spread hate and xenophobia just to win a campaign? For me, that's a step too far, she told the newspaper. So, again, that's not exactly bullish, is it? Okay. It is not exactly bullish, and that will hurt uh, the actual um, uh, vote leaves camp. Okay, but again, anything can happen. A market can certainly step in either direction. So again, it's very important, okay, to remain open-minded. Uh, the uncertainty remains, and therefore that risk-off event certainly uh, will dominate. Okay. Now again, uh, the market, from my perspective, has certainly factored in all the bullish news. In terms of bearish news this morning, we've had German inflation certainly coming in stronger than expected, and therefore that's certainly a negative bias on the uh, the actual European equity market. We've had exports and imports certainly weaker overnight as well in uh, in Japan. So again, that's a risk off event. We've had two uh, data points out of New Zealand that was certainly bearish. Again, that's a risk off event. So from my perspective, uh, the bullish news certainly has been baked into the cake, and now we're looking for a potential reversal. Now let's see exactly where these markets are positioned from a European uh, indices perspective. Okay, so first of all, the German DAX, given the fact that it's a bellwether, as you can see, the 10-minute chart is certainly overextended now, almost up three percent. The market closed at uh, 9630. Obviously, we've gapped up to 9900. 9930 was your pivot high. So, certainly overextended, looking for a retracement now. 60 minute chart, the German DAX, as you can see, the inverted head and shoulders for target was 9890. We've certainly surpassed that, and therefore, that short squeeze is certainly over. You have the unfilled gap below now, and that will potentially be targeted. Okay, so unfilled gap uh, below uh, remains the target, and given the uncertainty, etc., uh, again, looking for a bias to, uh, to move lower. Okay. And the uh, daily chart of the uh, German DAX, you can see that we are now into that 50 to 61%, and therefore bias remains bearish with unfilled gaps below. Okay, uh, And now the German DAX, a weakness, of our, as I've already told my subscribers, is uh, confirmed via the uh, the actual chart of uh, the uh, MDAX 50. Again, 
as you can see here, certainly into resistance, or sorry, the uh, old tech hold share, sorry, into resistance and therefore indicating risk off uh, the MDAX 50 again into gap fill resistance, okay, so therefore indicating risk off, okay, so again, certainly into resistance now for German indices and therefore looking for a potential reversal, okay, so certainly watch out for that potential reversal. And you can clearly see this on the daily chart, the German DAX, you can see we're into gap fill resistance. So certainly uh, expecting a potential move lower. Okay. Now in terms of the uh, European indices, let's just bring up the uh, CAC as well, just to give you an insight. Uh, the French CAC from my perspective, uh, again into gap fill resistance, so therefore looking for a move lower, folks. Okay. So looking for risk aversion for the French CAC. 60 minute chart, the French CAC, as you can see, inverted head and shoulders. Your inverted head and shoulders target was 4315. And therefore, that, that uh, inverted head and shoulders target has been complete now. So certainly looking for a move higher. So you've got this left shoulder here. Obviously, you've got the head down here, the right shoulder, and obviously you've pushed higher. Now that uh, that, that uh, inverted head and shoulders target has been met, and therefore looking for a move lower. The 10-minute chart certainly overextended. Again, your RSI obviously extended. Your um, your pivot point obviously extended as well. We passed a pivot point R3, obviously into gap fill resistance, and therefore looking for a flush lower now. Uh, in terms of a flush lower, you have an unfilled gap below. So if you take the pivot low, uh, let's connect it to the pivot high. So you're looking at at least a Fib 38% retracement. Okay, so looking at around uh, 4260, 4240 on the European indices. Okay, so watch out for the levels below. Okay, now in terms of the um, in terms of the uh, uh, FTSE 100, let's just bring up the FTSE because the FTSE is quite important here, folks. Okay, so FTSE 100, bring up the daily chart first of all. You can see that we have held FIB 61% resistance at 6160 and therefore looking for a potential move lower. Okay, the 60-minute uh, chart at present is into its 200 MA, previous support equals resistance and therefore looking for a move lower. So certainly from my perspective, uh, bias from here now certainly looks like it uh, wants to move lower. And that's what I'll be uh, keeping my eye on out for. Okay, so again, certainly looking for a move lower here. Okay, 10 minute chart on the FTSE certainly overextended. As you can see, we're into pivot R3 resistance. Okay, we've certainly closed a gap as well at 6120, and therefore it warrants a potential move in the opposite direction. So looking for a flush, given the fact that we have gap fill below as well at 6010. So that certainly remains open. Okay, and we're currently 150 points away from that. So very impressive. But nevertheless, FTSE itself, like I said, is certainly vulnerable to a flush lower. If we do move, move lower, your first area of support is 6040. So watch out for that support zone below. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, that certainly has uh, summed that up. Okay. So, yes, looking for a potential move lower flush. If I take your fib retracement, take your pivot low, take it to the pivot high, you're looking at at least a fib 38% retracement test of 6100 potentially, uh, 60080, and potentially even lower. So, certainly looking for a move lower. Okay, so uh, from my perspective, markets overbought, okay, uh, and certainly are due a potential pullback here. Uh, my bias remains bearish, currently bearish as well, currently short. Uh, you're more than welcome to join me live in the trading room. I'm starting now, so I'll uh, speak to you later. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of that 25% bonus offer. Goodbye now.